Whether a molecule is polar or not has a huge influence on its chemistry, how it sticks together, its intermolecular forces, and its reactivity. So it's a very critical thing to be able to determine, and it also involves quite a few different factors all accumulating into this one response, is the molecule polar or not? Now there are two big things you need to consider for whether a molecule is polar. The first is, are the bonds in this molecule polarized? Do you have a positive and negative end uh, where the electrons are not distributed evenly within the, within the particular bond? And then secondly, do all of those bonds add up in a way that's symmetrical and therefore the net dipole moment of the molecule is zero? Okay, so first of all, how do you figure out if bonds are polar? Well, for that, you use electronegativity values. So what happens is, let's say we have a molecule and let's work out CCl4, carbon tetrachloride. So carbon tetrachloride is tetrahedral and has chlorine atoms bonded to carbon. So when we ask if the bonds are polar, we're going to look individually at each bond and we're going to find the difference in their electronegativity values. So for, that, you're, so for that, you're going to look up on some kind of table or something what these values are. So in this one here, I'm given that carbon has a value of 2.6 and chlorine has a value of 3.2. Okay. So the difference in those is this minus this is 0.6. And then what we do is we apply that to a scale. So the scale is not meant to be discrete. When we say 0 to 0 0.4 is nonpolar, as you're increasing, even when you get up to 0.4, it's more polarized than it was at zero. So 0.6 here fits into our scale at moderately polar, which we can consider to be an, an affirmative answer to this. We do have polar bonds. Okay, so that's how we would do that analysis. The second part, though, is that for this particular molecule, the polarized bond means that we're going to have a charge distribution of a little bit of extra negative charge on the more electronegative atom, so in this case, chlorine. So we're going to get a little bit of negative charge here, a little bit of negative charge here, a little bit of negative charge here, and then the carbon is losing some of its electron density to those more electronegative atoms. So the second part is, how does all of that work in terms of symmetry? Now this is a tetrahedral thing, so don't be fooled by the kind of flat image that we've drawn for the Lewis structure, but in the tetrahedral arrangement, what happens is we essentially have a completely symmetrical molecule. And so what that means is, is we don't have a negative end and a positive end to the molecule that we're looking for. So the fact that it's symmetrical means that it would fail this test, even though it passed this one, and it would not be a polar molecule. We would expect this not to stick together very well between multiple molecules. If I have a carbon tetrachloride here and another carbon tetrachloride here, I would expect a very weak interaction between them, and I would expect this possibly to be a gas then. Now, what we then want to be able to do is after we've assigned this molecular polarity, well, what does that mean in terms of its stickiness? And so what we find is, is that if you have a polar molecule, that means that you're going to have dipole interactions. And in some cases, not only just dipole, you also have hydrogen bonding if that sets up based on a hydrogen attached to a particular atom. If it's nonpolar as a molecule, that means that the only method that these things are going to stick together by is dispersion forces, or London dispersion forces. So carbon tetrachloride will only experience London dispersion forces for its intermolecular force. Now keep in mind that dispersion forces become larger as the number of electrons grows. So the fact that I have a pretty significant number of electrons here means that I might still have a decent attraction between carbon tetrachloride molecules relative to something that's maybe polar but is very small with very few electrons but we would expect it to be relatively weak, especially compared to something such as bonds. Okay, let's do one more example here. So for something like water, Water, we have a hydrogen, which has an electronegativity of 2.2, and oxygen, which has an electronegativity of 3.4. So the difference there is 1.2. So we would say on our scale, and this is definitely polar, so yes to number one. We have polar bonds. And the second question is, is this an asymmetrical molecule? Now, as I've drawn it, it looks like it's symmetrical, but we have to consider this in the 3D context. This is an asymmetrical molecule actually bent in shape, where we have a bond angle here of about 105 degrees. And so what we'll find is, is that we'll have a negative end and a positive end to this molecule. 
and that allows these to align in a way where they can stick together through that unequal distribution of electrons and through that charge formation that we have. This will still have dispersion forces, but this particular dipole, the hydrogen bonding interactions that will form, that will be very strong.